Okay, so today's video is all about the Cordova Media Plugin. Now, the Media Plugin has a very specific use case. It's for recording audio or playing back audio. So the example that I'm going to do is all about playing back the audio. I've created a, a basic Cordova project. I've added the Cordova Media Plugin, which is the command Cordova Plugin Add Cordova hyphen plugin hyphen media. So I've already done this. That plugin has been added. And inside the body of my HTML file, my index.html, this is my home page, I've just added a series of paragraphs with a button inside of each one. I've given each one of them an ID so I can target them to do the play pause, control the volume, jump forward and backwards, so seek to different points inside of an audio file. We have our Cordova.js link here. The file, of course, is not inside of our actual file folder. This will be added when we do the compile for the project. All right, we are going to do Cordova emulate Android. So I've built it, I've added the Android platform, and I have started my emulator here. So I'm going to be running the app inside of Android for testing. Everything that I'm going to be doing here, though, will work on iOS as well as Android. So you can use it for either one. All right, there we go. So my emulator is connected. The web page hasn't loaded quite yet. So that should be coming up in a moment. There we go. It's still going through the build. And when that comes up, I will... And there we go. So I'm going to launch my inspector window here. And this way I can look at the console and see if there's any error messages or feedback coming to me. So there we are. Here's the emulator. Here's our console tracking this. I've got these connected through remote devices. All right, let's jump back and take a look at the code and see what's going to happen here. In my index.js file, this is the JavaScript file that I've got connected to the project. I went with the default configuration, created the app namespace the same way that the code that they give you when you create a blank project. You get this little app object and you put all your properties and functions inside that. So I've configured that configured my project the same way. Inside of here, I created an object called track. This is really just to give me a place to store information like the volume for the audio file that I'm playing, the location of the audio file that I'm playing. Inside my www folder, I created a media folder. And inside that, that's where I'm storing my media files. I'm not going offline or searching anywhere online for my media files. I've got them embedded inside of here. When I compile the project, this www folder will be copied into the actual Android project. If you look inside of platforms, inside of Android, inside of here, this is where all of that stuff is going to be copied. Here's your platform www. So it'll be copied inside of here and treated as if all of these are assets for the Android application. So I have this object so I can do app.track.src or app.track.title, app.track.volume to get this information. Media is a global object that I created. When you're using the media plugin, you need to instantiate a media object from the plugin. And this is the thing that's going to let you play, pause, do whatever you want with that audio file. These two objects here, status and ERR for error, these are the different codes that you will get back from Cordova. So when things work and a status changes, you'll get one of these numbers, 0 through 4. And this is the meaning of those things. If you have an error, you'll get the numbers 1 through 4. And these are the meanings for that. If you're wondering, wondering why there's no zero for the error, that's because whenever you're programming, if you get an error code back that is zero, it means there was no problem. So it wouldn't make sense to have an error number zero and then actually have that mean something negative. Okay, my init function, this is the one that's going to run when my app loads. I'm listening for the device ready event. This is the one that tells me that DOM content loaded has fired and all of the plugins for Cordova 
that I have in my project have been loaded. App.ready, this is the function that I'm calling. Uh, I'm going to add listeners. This is all my button listeners. I've also added listeners for the pause and remote resume events. You don't absolutely have to have them. I just throw them in as a matter of course. And then here's that app.track object, the source. This is the file that I'm going to load. And right here, this one line, line 33, new media. This is how you play audio with this plugin. You get this new media object, you create it, you pass it the source. So this variable right here, this is the location of the file that you want to play on your device. So I'm giving it this file right here, this Fight Club file. I'm giving it two functions, sorry, three functions right here. For the win, WTF, and status change. These three functions have a specific purpose. The first one is, this is the function to call whenever something has been successfully done in the app. So if you're stopping the media file, like if it runs to the end and stops, if you start playing it properly, this function will run. The second one is, hey, there was a failure. I couldn't get something on the network. Uh, the file was corrupted. Something went wrong. So we've got a successful function, a failure function, and then the last one is a function that runs whenever there's a change in the status. And up here, these are the different statuses we'll get. So there was no media, or the media started running. Sorry, the media started, it is now running, the media has paused, or the media has stopped. So running and pause, this is back and forth. You'll toggle back and forth between those. My app.status change, you can see down here, all I'm doing is I'm writing out in the console what that status is. I'm getting the code right here, and then I'm going to write out one of my messages from up above. Uh, something goes wrong, I'm going to write that out in the console. Something worked right here, I'm going to write this out. So these are basically just tracking functions to let you know, hey, something progressed, I went to the next status, I went to the next state. If everything's working or there's something going wrong. That's the general information about it. This is events related to your media. My ad listeners, here's the click listeners I have on all my buttons. So I've got a play, a pause, a volume up, a volume down, a fast forward, and a rewind function. These are the ones where I'm using this media object. So you create the media object and then you can use that media object app.media, that's my object, and there's a whole bunch of these methods. Play, pause, set volume, and seek to is the other one that I'm using here. There's get current position, get duration. These get current position will tell you where in the song am I right now, or that where in the audio file am I. Give me that number in seconds. Get duration gives me the number in seconds. Seek to Strangely enough, doesn't work with seconds, it works with milliseconds. So if you take your position and you multiply that by a thousand, that will give you the accurate place to use for seek to. All right, so let's take a look at this app. It's running, and I'll bring up, there we go. So I've got my console, and when I hit play, it is now started, now running, and we can pause that, start it again, volume can go up, volume can go down, and you can see these are the numbers that we're setting. It's a, just a value between uh, 0 and 1. That's what the volume is. And you can increment, decrement by whatever you want. You can build a little drag bar to change that number if you want a slider. Um, when it's playing, you can fast forward. So I'm jumping ahead 10 seconds at a time. Rewind, I'm jumping backwards 10 seconds at a time. I'm just not writing out the message at that point. And then that's it. That's all there is to working with the media plugin. It is really just as simple as that. You create your media object using the new media to instantiate it. You give it the file location for the win so a success, a fail, and a status change function. So you can handle things inside there if you want. These are sort of event listeners for the media object. Then the methods play, pause, set volume. 
and so on. And if you're looking for a list of these, I actually, at the top of the file here, I have the link. This is the Cordova Media plugin link. And if we, here, I'll close this off. We don't need that. On this page, in the table of contents, oops, sorry, not that one. Here, let's uh, close this. There we go. So inside this page, inside the media plugin, there we go. There's the statuses. Here's all the methods. So you can see there's quite a long list of methods that you can use. Seek to when you're jumping around. Remember that this is milliseconds, not seconds. Play, pause, and stop. The difference between pause and stop is pause stops it playing but doesn't change the position in the file. Stop will stop it and jump back to the beginning. That's the difference there. There is no get volume. You'll notice there's a set volume, but there's no get volume. Amplitude is a different thing. It's not the same as volume. And this one doesn't always work depending on your file. So if you want to find out what the current volume level is in your application, like I'm using a built-in variable here. I've got volume set to 0.5 when my app launches, and then I'm increasing, decreasing this number right here, and then just using it to keep track of what the volume is. If you want to find out the real value on the device, there's another plugin here called the Android Volume plugin. This is specifically for Android. If you add this plugin to your project, you'll be able to retrieve what the current volume is for media and the other different types of volume that Android keeps track of. Then you can use that to determine the value that you want to use for setting the volume. When you uh, stop and release the audio or when you shut down the app the volume information is lost um, if you played another track the volume information for this one be lost as long as this one's still active it will remember what the volume is so if you increase or change it it'll make sense to Android um, the release is one thing that I didn't mention in here I'm just trying to remember if I actually placed it in my code note looks like I didn't um, Oh, right here, in the pause. App.media.release. So media is my media object. The release method, this is the thing that will free up memory. So if you're building something and you're playing an audio file, that audio file is being loaded into memory on the device. And if you don't want it to keep hanging on to that memory, if you want to start playing a second track or doing something else, I recommend that you call the release method to tell Android, I don't need to hang on to that file anymore. It doesn't need to be taking up 3 megs or 10 megs or 50 megs worth of memory. Just let it go. We're done with that file. So important thing for when you're working with uh, Android with the media player. All right. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I will leave a sample of this code uh, as a code gist for you so you can download and uh, experiment with it. And as always, thanks for watching.